While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the concepts of Lewis dot structures and other things associated with Lewis dot structures. Let's look at the no fuss method first. For instance, let's say you need to draw the Lewis dot structure of NO3 minus. Remember that minus means the molecule has an overall negative charge. The first step in this process is number one, calculate the total number of available valence electrons. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here's step one. In our molecule, we simply have nitrogen and we have three oxygens. The nitrogen and the oxygens have a certain number of valence electrons. And remember, we could look that up on the periodic table. But in this particular case, this molecule has an overall negative charge, so it has one extra electron. So let's add that to our total count right here. So let's do the math. What are the valence electrons for nitrogen? Well, he's in column five on the periodic table of elements. Oxygen is number six on the periodic table of elements. So that means nitrogen has five valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. And since we have three of them, we write it as three times six. Plus, remember, we have that extra electron there in the molecule. So the total number of available electrons is 24 in this case. So that's step one. Let's hang on to that number and let's go to step two now. Calculate the total number of electrons needed for each element. Well, how do we know the needed electrons for these atoms? Well, remember the octet rule. Remember, these are the elements that need eight electrons around them in order to be happy. And look at this list. Notice you have nitrogen and oxygen on the list. So going back, what we're saying is that each one of these elements in this molecule needs eight electrons. So let me show you how to calculate two here. What we have is the nitrogen member plus the three oxygens. Each one needs eight, so nitrogen needs eight, and the three oxygens need eight. So eight plus three times eight is simply 32. Now we're ready for step three. Step three is take the difference between the values obtained in step one and step two. So number three, remember we got 32 and 24. The difference between those two numbers is simply eight. Always subtract the bigger number from the smaller number. Now we're ready for step four here. Step four is divide the value obtained in step three by two. So we got eight in step three. So we're gonna take eight, divide him by two, and that's gonna give us four. Now we did all this math simply to get the value obtained in step four. And here's what we use this value for. This happens to be the number of bonds in the Lewis dot structure for this molecule. So let's put them up here again. Remember, we want this Lewis dot structure of NO3 minus. He's made up of nitrogen. And let's place the three oxygens around him like this. And now we know that there are four total bonds in this molecule. So let's start making connections here. Let's make one bond to the nitrogen to the oxygen. And let's connect the other oxygens to the nitrogen as well. Now notice that's three bonds right there, so that's three out of the four. So where does the fourth bond go? Well, all you simply do is double up one of the bonds. And it doesn't matter which one you double up. You could have doubled up the bond on the left or the bond below the nitrogen. Because all we need to know from the Lewis dot structure is the type of bonding in the molecule. And what we've learned here is that in this particular molecule, one of the oxygens is doubly bonded to nitrogen and the other two oxygens are singly bonded. Now, we're not finished yet. Let's do the next step here, and that is to fill in the lone pair electrons. And the way we do that is we remember the octet rule. Let's look at the right oxygen in this molecule. Filling in his electrons to give him eight electrons total would look something like this, meaning we would have to know to put two lone pairs of electrons on him. How would we know to do that? Well, remember, that's the only way that he would have eight electrons around him. Notice if you count the electrons in the blue box, you'll see that there are eight electrons. 
So you would have noticed the double bond to the nitrogen. Each bond has two electrons, so that would be four electrons that are bonding, which means you'd have to put two lone pairs on the oxygen to bring you to eight electrons. You do this for every atom in this molecule. Let's take care of the bottom oxygen here. To fill him in, he would need three lone pairs. And again, why is that? Because that would simply give him eight total electrons around him. And what about this oxygen on the left here? Well, again, he would also have three lone pairs so that he can have simply a total of eight electrons around him. However, there's one more step we should perform here, and that is now we need to fill in the formal charges. Well, let's start with the leftmost oxygen. Remember, we said if oxygen has one bond and three lone pairs, he would have a negative one formal charge. The same is true for the bottom oxygen. He has one bond and three lone pairs, so he would have a negative formal charge. The oxygen on the right there has two bonds, technically, and two lone pairs, so he would have a zero formal charge. So we leave him blank. And lastly, that nitrogen, notice he has a total of one bond to the left, one bond down, and two bonds to the right. And we know in this particular case, nitrogen would have a plus one formal charge. And this right here is your Lewis dot structure of NO3 minus. Now, just in case, if this is a question on your test, there's a way to check to make sure you got the right structure. I call them checkpoints. There's two things that you can verify to make sure that you got the right answer. And number one is the number of available valence electrons. Remember, this is the thing that we calculated first in the no fuss method here. So let me show you how to use that. Let's fill in all the electrons here, the ones that are actually in the bonds, and all the lone pairs here. Remember, in step one, the number of available valence electrons, we got a value of 24. What you would do here is count all the lone pair electrons and the bonding electrons, all the electrons here in these circles. If you count them all up and it adds up to 24, then your Lewis dot structure is correct. And here's another thing to verify. You can use the formal charges. This one works very simply. All you do is look at all the formal charges on the molecule. Here we got the negative, the plus, and the negative. Those formal charges better add up to the overall charge of the molecule, NO3. Remember, he's NO3 minus. And if you counted up all the formal charges in our Lewis dot structure, minus, plus, minus, plus positive, it gives you a total of negative one. And notice in this particular case, it does match up. One important thing I want to mention here is that this no fuss method only works for when you want to draw the Lewis dot structure of a molecule that only has atoms that need an octet. And remember, only a certain number of atoms actually need an octet. So before you use this method, make sure all of the atoms of your molecule are on the octet rule list. Now, when I say this is the no fuss method, it means you get to the answer with very little thought. However, these steps take time, so it's definitely not the quickest method. There is another method that's quicker. It takes a little more thought, but it's definitely more handy in organic chemistry.